Uh, my name is Kayla Marshall. This is my third season on the Fire Effects crew. I'm Taylor Duncan. This is my second season on the Rocky Fire Effects crew. Uh, we do a few different things, but our main job is to go out to areas in the park that have been burned before, um, usually by prescribed fire. And then we basically go to these areas and we get a read on the landscape. So we take inventory of what plants come back, um, what trees are there, um, what shrubs are there. So not only are we doing a lot of field work, um, but we are also firefighters as well. We're required to be in the park if the park has a prescribed fire program. So we are in charge of figuring out if the park is meeting like management strategies, if the pres prescribed fire is um, successful and looking at how, how the landscape is recovering from fire. It's really important to have, um, when you're implementing a management plan, it's really important to have science back that up. We don't wanna just put fire out on the landscape just because we feel like it. We wanna make sure that we're using fire. Um, sorry, we wanna use, we wanna make sure that um, it is benefiting our ecosystem ecologically, not just because we want to put fire on the ground, just because we want to. So we survey everything from the, the, the plants in the plot, the shrubs in the plot, the trees, um, and also anything that is dead on the ground is also fuel. Um, and we, starting with the trees, we want to know if they're dead or alive, what species they are, how, um, what their DBH is, which is, this is a DBH tape. Um, this helps us measure, we wrap it around the tree and it tells us what the diameter of the tree is. Um, and we do that at the same height. We measure it at the same height for every tree. Um, and, for the shrubs, we also care about the species of the shrubs and the quantity of the shrubs in the plot. Um, and for the vegetation, we look at the species of the plant, um, how, how high they're growing. Um, and then for fuels, we, we also look at any sticks on the ground, um, dead trees on the ground, and we also look at the soil um, beneath, you know, all the vegetation, because that'll burn too. This is just a general height pole. It's about two meters. So we use this um, to measure trees, and we also use this to measure um, vegetation. Um, this is also, so this is just a regular digital camera. Um, we like to take pictures of our plots. Um, those are really important, especially when comparing them to what this area looked like before it was actually burned. So um, yeah, pictures are really important to us. Um, and then we have um, just a plant identification book. Um, Taylor and I know a lot of the plants just right off the top of our heads, but um, sometimes we do run into some grasses that are a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, that's our bread and butter. We're really good at identifying plants. <laughs> and this is a plant um, voucher, we call it, or a mobile herbarium. This is one of our very useful tools um, when we're out in the field trying to identify plants. Um, we um, sometimes come across things that we're not super familiar with and this is a good way to compare in the field the live specimen with the specimen in this book and we just have pressed flowers um, and we have the species, Latin name, common name and this is really helpful to compare 
live specimens to um, like an actual an actual specimen. I started out just really wanting to work for the National Park Service. Um, after college, I visited parks and was super passionate about being outdoors, working outside, and I have a science background. I went to school for biochem and environmental science. Um, and yeah, I applied for all the biology jobs in the park and was able to um, interview for fire effects and I thought it sounded really exciting. Biology and fire like mixed together. It sounds very interesting and exciting. Um, yeah, and this is my third season doing it. So yeah, my answer is kind of similar to Taylor's. I knew growing up that I really just wanted to be able to work outside, um, but I got a degree um, in forestry and natural resources from University of Kentucky. Um, and when I graduated, I knew that I loved doing field work and I was also really interested in fire. Um, so I stumbled upon this job and I thought it was a perfect fit um, just because it does involve fire and botany, um, biology and ecology. So yeah, just, I got lucky, I think. So if you want to get, I guess, involved with uh, fire ecology and what we do, um, there are classes and there are um, walks that the interpretive rangers put on um, that is open to the public. So you can learn about fire ecology that way. Um, there are also a lot of volunteer groups um, that work for the park and that's a great way to not only learn about our crew, but other crews as well, and it's just a great way to network. I love stumbling upon uh, rare plants, which is very cool, and also seeing, um, we always find antlers out in the field, um, elk antlers and mule deer antlers. Um, so yeah, those are probably the two coolest things that I've seen out in the field? Um, last year we had a plot that we went out to that was in the burn um, from 2020 and that was really interesting to see all the species that were in the wildflowers that were coming up. Um, it's just super cool to be able to see a post burn area up close and personal. I'm just thinking about um, the burn scars from 2020. Um, I remember seeing a lot of invasive plants um, unfortunately come back, uh, but in a way that is natural, native plants will, we'd like to think that they will eventually outcompete um, non-native plants. And this is a, this is a great um, plot to talk about. Uh, so this, plot was burned 15 years ago. Um, there's a few invasive plants around here, but most of these plants that you see, the grasses, the shrubs, the trees, um, these are all native um, species. Um, so yeah, this is, this is great to see because it just shows that fire, prescribed fire does work um, when promoting native plants.